They're dissolved and their bodies drift apart and melt. And the picture says, thank you. We are gonna be checking out this beautiful acidic wetland forest for carnivorous plants. All right, everybody, and welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now, today we're doing something a little different. We are going to be checking out this beautiful, acidic wetland forest for carnivorous plants. Today we are looking for the beautiful and illustrious Saracenia alata, the pale pitcher plant. Now, these are static carnivorous plants, which means there's no moving parts, but they're still capturing and feeding on animals. So we're gonna see if we can find a good place for me to hunker down so I can talk to you a little bit about pitcher plants. Let's go. What do you know? We found some. So these are really cool and unique plants that once again are carnivorous. Now what they do is they've got this little hood that shields a lovely pitcher. And this pitcher collects water that the plant then releases nectar and certain digestive enzymes into and that entices insects sometimes even small animals such as mice or lizards or all sorts of things depending on where these pitcher plants can be found and these little creatures will hop right into these pitchers and become food for plants wow it's kind of a big gust now the reason these plants have adapted to become carnivorous is because the acidic wetlands in which they reside have low nutritional quality for them in the soil. That means that they're not getting quite as many minerals and different components that they would like to get from the medium that they find themselves planted in. So they offset this by supplementing their diet with the minerals that they decompose from living insects. So there's all sorts of flies and ants and moths kind of trickling in and around and inside of these plants. And as they get trapped within the pitcher and they fall into that sweet smelling nectar, they're dissolved and their bodies drift apart and melt. And the pitcher says, thank you. Thank you very much, idiot, for falling into my trap. Now what I mean is, when I, mean, when I say static, as I mentioned before, no moving parts. If you recall, a Venus flytrap has tiny little hairs that are connected to a little reflexive motor. And as an insect touches those hairs, the Venus flytrap closes in snaring its prey. Pitcher plants have no need for this because their main mode of trapping it's just allowing the animals to come to them. This is a very lure bait kind of method where they are smelling sweet or nice and juicy, maybe something that the insect would like to eat, and then they're falling into and drowning or being trapped in these pitchers. Now, these are super special because these are herbaceous perennial plants, which means that they are growing um, throughout the year, and then they kind of become inactive in the winter months. So a lot of these beautiful pictures like you see around me uh, will kind of turn this brown color and then they will flop over, but their big old root mass and rhizomes will stay dormant. And then once the year warms up, they shoot out new pictures to feed on new insects. Now, lucky for us, Saracenia as a genus, these beautiful pitcher plants are really endemic to North America. Uh, so you really only get to see these as they kind of stretch around the southern United States, up the east coast, and into some of Canada. Uh, but these are really beautiful plants, and they're quite attractive to look at. Um, and they can be quite abundant in areas such as this, where the environment is really conducive uh, to their lifestyle. Lots of insects, 
Um, it's nice and rainy and overcast today, but normally it's boiling hot. So a lot of times this is the only collection of water that these plants, I mean, that, that the animals around can find. And so if you're a tiny insect, you're not, you're not a lot of luck. Um, but there's actually been a lot of documentation of like species like tree frogs and things seeking shelter in these Saracenia pitchers because there's a nice, humid, cool, shady place to hunker down during the heat of the day. And these, even though they're carnivorous, these plants can provide priceless shelter uh, for some of our native amphibian species. Well, we had a great time checking out these amazingly beautiful pitcher plants. I hope you all enjoyed looking at them as much as I have enjoyed showing them to you. Uh, this is a really cool species, actually one of my first times going out and seeing pitcher plants in North America. Uh, I had the pleasure of seeing some tropical pitcher plants, Nepenthes in Southeast Asia, um, but I've not actually been able to get out and see very many carnivorous plants in my own home country. So this was really cool for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss any other episodes. Um, be sure to join our channel memberships for exclusive behind the scenes content. Buy the new merchandise. It's pretty cool if I do say so myself. And be sure, above everything else, to tune into the next episode of Jack's World of Wildlife. Because if you don't, I'm not saying anything bad will happen. But we have seen a lot of positive results in people who have tuned into the episode. So, not a threat, but, you know, probably it'd be in your best interest to watch more episodes from me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.